This is Mrs. Moore, and we're going to talk about setting, this time social, cultural, and historical setting. You can use guided notes or any note-taking approach that you prefer. So we've analyzed setting before and talked about where and when the story is in terms of time and location, but setting's more than just time and place. Um, it is where things are socially, like what are the social expectations, what is the cultural moment, what are the things that are in the broader culture that are going on, and also what's the historical moment. Um, in this case, we have a, a, portrait, a painting from the late 1700s. It is a Gothic painting um, of a man that says he's a philosopher in a moonlit churchyard. Um, and so we can kind of glean a few clues from this um, as to what's going on. First of all, it's late at night when he's in this churchyard. Um, and that, you know, why would he be wandering late at night in a churchyard? Well, it looks like he's been going in and down into graves um, and perhaps doing things that he ought not to do. Like the rule is that you're not supposed to disturb a grave, but this person may possibly be there to um, to disturb the bones of the dead. Um, he is historically, this is a moment um, where obviously um, there have been great churches built. Those churches are now falling into disrepair, at least this one is. Um, and culturally, he is someone who, um, you know, since, since we're calling him a philosopher, he's someone who's a thinker of some kind, possibly a natural philosopher, which means scientist, basically. Um, and he is, uh, he's trespassing in a place where he doesn't belong. And so that tells us something about him as a character um, in this painting. Um, so when we talk about these settings, and we, we want to kind of look at what that means in terms of literary analysis. So historical setting, we'll be asking what time period this is set in. And we want to ask whether is this a time period where the author is living in that time period and writing about like right then for them, that would be contemporary, or is the author writing about something that is in the past for them? Um, same thing with the reader. Are we reading something that's contemporary to us or historical to us? Um, with Frankenstein, I'll tell you right now, it's historical to us. That's pretty easy. But it is contemporary, fairly contemporary to its author, Mary Shelley. Um, you want to think, too, about what are the larger conflicts of the time period and how they're present directly or indirectly in the novel. For example, Frankenstein takes part right about here, um, where the 18th century is turning into the 19th century. Uh, it was originally written in 1818. So some of the conflicts of that time period have to do with um, the beginnings of science as we understand it, the beginnings of industrialization as we understand it, and also the Romantic movement, which you'll hear more about later. So one example here, uh, looking at historical setting, this is actually from the prologue to, uh, it's the introduction that she wrote later in life to, um, to the book. And she points out that uh, she was consistently, we'll give it green for Frankenstein here, uh, listening to her husband and his, uh, his friend, the poet Lord Byron, discussing various philosophical doctrines in which they're, she's talking about effectively science. So she talks about, they talk about the experience of Dr. Darwin. This is actually Dr. Erasmus, not Dr. Charles Darwin, um, who preserved a piece of vermicelli, that's a worm, I'm going to make a little worm there, in a glass case, and it began to move. And she says that they then thought about maybe this was how a corpse could be reanimated. Um, galvanism, which is lightning, <laughs> it's electricity, uh, had given token of such things. And then she says perhaps the component parts of a creature might be brought together and endued with vital warmth. This was something that they did not know how to do. We now have heart transplants and lung transplants and kidney transplants. They had not yet figured out how to transfuse blood successfully, but they were starting to suspect that it could happen. So that's the historical moment that she finds herself in here and that we are going to have to kind of put ourselves in for the novel. Um, social setting is, has to do with how society works and what are the rules of society. Um, again, you have to ask yourself, is the author part of that or observing from outside? Is the reader part of it or observing from outside? Um, we have some very well-to-do people in the novel Frankenstein. Um, Victor Frankenstein himself comes from a pretty wealthy family. And this is something that I think um, uh, Mary was observing, possibly not from the inside, but definitely from the outside. She, she was not part of a very wealthy family. Um, so this is an example of um, kind of this social expectation here in this little bit from uh, one of the early chapters in Frankenstein. This is one of Victor's father's most intimate friends was a merchant. So this, this man 
uh, fell through numerous mischances into poverty. So he goes bankrupt. Um, he's of a proud and unbending disposition and he couldn't bear to live in poverty and oblivion in, in the same company country where he'd formerly been distinguished for his rank and magnificence. So we have this moment here where it's like, not only he's become poor, but worse than being poor is being poor in a place where he was previously known to be rich, right? So he does, however, pay his debts in the most honorable manner before he retreats with his daughter, whom we will see again, to Lucerne, uh, where he lives unknown and in wretchedness. So we have some clues about society, right? It's important to be wealthy and to have position, but if you lose that wealth and if you lose that position, um, you you know, it is it is almost a moral shame. Like this person must not they can't just say oh bankrupt too bad they have to they're going to remove themselves from society after they honorably pay their debts because honor is tied to money in this way so let's look also at the cultural setting so what is the culture in which this novel is set and that would have to do with the arts the sciences and things that were going on we talked about science as part of history it also kind of influences culture um and again as the author part of this culture is the reader obviously we are far distant from the culture that we're finding ourselves in. Um, but one example here is um, Agrippa, the works of Cornelius Agrippa, which a young Victor Frankenstein stumbles on. His father looks at this and says, oh, you know, don't waste your time reading that. It's sad trash. Um, one of my favorite lines in this book, it is sad trash. Um, and sadly, Victor listening to this doesn't ask his father why, he just runs off and goes, well, I'll show you and studies Agrippa anyway. Um, his father was trying, should have told him that a modern system of science has been introduced. So um, he's at a cultural tipping point between two forms of science, but Agrippa is actually very out of date. And that's the cultural reference that Victor doesn't get as a child, that Agrippa has been disproven for like hundreds of years. Um, don't worry, he gets corrected later, but he spends a lot of his time studying alchemy when he didn't need to do that. So... When you're analyzing the setting, what you want to do is consider what the setting can tell you about the characters and their world. For example, Victor, who is told that Agrippa is totally out of date, barrels in and he doesn't care and he's going to study Agrippa anyway. That's the kind of person Victor is and it tells you a lot about what kind of choices he's going to make later in this novel. Um, He's not going to make the choices that would be sensible, that's what. Um, but also think about in any novel you read, how do the social, social, historical, and cultural moments shape, shape characters' choices? What's expected of a character? That goes for a modern novel as well as it goes for a novel written 100, 200, 400 years ago. Um, what's expected of those characters? Are their actions consistent with those expectations or are they rebelling against those expectations? And that tells you something about the world. It tells you something about the author's idea of conflict. It also tells you a great deal about who that character is. So when you think about setting and where and when the story is set, think too about what's the social moment and the social expectations. What are the cultural was the cultural moment and expectations and what is the historical, the larger historical moment that these characters find themselves in because the ways they react to the world around them, the world in which they find themselves, tell you a lot about who they are and about what's going to be their conflict 